everybody, this is Tracy here to recap Welcome to Sweetie Pie Season 4, Episode 4. And this um, episode was entitled Vacation Sweetie Pie Style. So it was good to see Miss Robbie and her family, you know, having a good time, you know, after all that they've endured, you know, with the loss of Andre. And I think it was a good break for the viewers of the show as well because um, the last three episodes have been very heavy and very... Um, hard to digest so I think we all needed this break so on this episode Tim surprises the family with a trip to Universal Studios which is in my home state of Florida and it's little TJ's fourth birthday so what better way to celebrate than a trip to um, Orlando Florida so the show opens up with the family you know arriving at the hotel and everyone is happy and excited to be there and you know we have Charles and he's in charge of you know making sure that everybody has their um, hotel rooms and that they know what the itinerary is because he's planned out the entire, I think they were there for three days and he's planned everything out for them. And so the hotel they're staying at, I believe it was a Lowe's hotel, but it was um, very nice and it was so funny because when they were in the lobby, you know, the other guests were walking around and, you know, they're looking at them like, you know, who are these people? Why are there cameras? And I'm sure a few of them may have known that, you know, it was um, the Sweetie Pies family from the show. But for the most part, um, the people may not have known, you know, they could have been tourists that were from out of the country. So in this episode, you know, we get to meet um, a little more of the family. And so um, Charles has a father. I don't know why that surprised me, but uh, Miss Jan's husband, he was there. And then Charles has two other sisters. And I don't think he's ever mentioned those sisters before. And I can't remember their names. I do know they both um, names began with a C. Not sure if they are twins or if it's just one of those things where you name all your children, you know, with the first um with the same um, first initial. And so uh, we also get to meet Miss Robbie's brother. Now I'm not sure, I don't think they ever really introduced him and I'm not sure if he's the same brother that she mentioned in the previous episode who had also done time at the um, Missouri State Penitentiary on um, the same place where Tim was locked up at, but it was good to see him there. And for the most part, everybody looked happy to be there and they were really excited for this family um, getaway and this family vacation. So I was happy for them also. So also tagging along are Miss Robbie's sisters, Jan and Linda. And you know, Jan is Charles's mom and Linda is Monique's mom. And so Monique was there and her daughter, whose name I think is Naya, she was also there. And then of course it was TJ and his mom, Janae, you know, they were there as well because it was TJ's birthday. So the first night, you know, well actually it wasn't the first night, I I think it was the morning after everybody arrived that um, Tim receives a phone call from Bruce out in um, California and he tells Tim, you know, you need to come back to LA because I took the permits to, um, there's two restaurants that Tim is trying to open and one is in Inglewood and then I guess there's another one that's going to be like really nice and fancy. And I can't remember um, what part of LA that one is in, but it was that restaurant that um, Bruce is claiming that he took the um, permits down, the plans down to the permitting office and that the city said that only the owner of the building could um, turn in the plans and that Tim had 48 hours to get there with the plans and a check to pay for it. And I'm sitting there like, <sighs> okay, <laughs> like, um, are we really believing this, that only the owner of the building uh, could drop the plans off? I mean, he wasn't trying to change the plans. He wasn't trying to get the permit. He was just there to drop them off because trust me, they were not getting ready to read those plans right then and there. And if you remember the general contractor, whose name I think is Human, you know, he told him that it would take like 30 days for the city to even approve the plan. So anyway, you know, we just need a little extra drama thrown in there. And then plus I was sitting there thinking, you know, they were only going to be in uh, Florida for like two or three days. Like surely Tim could have stayed with his family and enjoyed the vacation and then gone back home um, to deal with whatever was going on with the plans. But like I say, I guess he felt they needed the drama um, in the episode. So we're going to roll with it with them. 
them. So, you know, Tim lets us know that he has no choice but to catch the next flight back to Los Angeles, you know, family vacation be damned. So anyway, the family, you know, they're already at the theme park when Tim calls um, to let them know that he has to return to Los Angeles and he's the only one that can handle what needs to be done. And so, you know, Miss Robin, she's upset, but she knows her son and says that, you know, the show must go on whether um, Tim is there or not. And so the better part of the show, you know, the family was enjoying themselves on the rides and, you know, just being at the park. And although I live in Florida, I have never been to Universal Studios before. But let me tell you, I have spent many a days at, you know, the greatest place on earth, which is on Disney World. And, um, you know, when I was growing up, you know, my parents used to take us to Disney World. We used to go almost every summer. You know, we would start out our two-week summer vacation where we would go to the theme parks in Disney World. And then we would go to Ocala. And we slowly make our way north to Tallahassee, you know, where we would spend some time with uh, my, both of my um, grandmothers, um, I think my grand, one of my grandfathers died before I was born and the other died when I was like only three years old. But that was our, you know, summer routine was that we would go visit my um, parents' family who both lived in, um, were from Tallahassee, I'm sorry. And so, you know, um, and you know, those theme parks, I don't know how much they cost when we were kids growing up, but I know I take my daughters, you know, who are grown themselves, but it's something we like to do. And to get into Disney World for one day is like 130 something dollars, I think the last time we was there. And so you can get a Florida resident special, which is three days for the price of one, but you can't go consecutive days. You have to like spread it out over the year. And I'm thinking coming from, you know, out of state and it was like 12 of them in the group. Oh, they spent um, probably about three, no, probably more than $3,000 because you figure it like 300 and something dollars for the three day pass times 12. Yeah, so about $3,600 it probably cost them just for admittance into the park. That doesn't even include the hotel rooms, the food. Um, you know, prizes, toys, and all that other stuff. So yeah, that was a costly vacation for uh, Tim to have skipped out on. And the other thing I was thinking about with that show, um, you know, like I said, I've never been to Universal, so I don't know if they were there like early in the morning, because sometimes if you're staying at the hotels at these resorts and stuff, they'll let you into the theme park early. So I don't know if the filming was done like during the early hours for the resort guests but there was not a lot of people there but if you show up at disney world it's like people on top of people and we oftentimes i have a daughter that has autism so one of the blessings with having a special needs child is that we do get to skip to the front of the line at disney world but without her you know those lines have like an hour hour and a half two hour wait depending on what time of the year that you go so i did notice that there were not that many guests at universal studios so i'm thinking Maybe they had like the early hour package going on. So after the first day, Miss Robbie, you know, she's planning this special dinner for the family. And poor TJ, you know, it was his birthday and she was going to surprise him with a birthday cake. But he was passed out. You know, he was, he had had a lot of fun that day. And so he was tired and he was sleeping and they couldn't really get him to wake up. You know, so the family, they are reminiscing about, you know, when TJ was first born. And if you guys remember, he was born really premature, like maybe six weeks premature or something, but you know, it was touch and go and they didn't know if he was going to make it. And you know, they were talking about what a scary time it was. Then the conversation went to the time when Miss Robbie had took Charles and Andre on vacation, you know, so they were talking and laughing about that and how Miss Robbie had, had to reach across the table and lay hands on Andre while they were in the restaurant. And, um, you know, it was, the mood was kind of bittersweet at that point, you know, without Andre being there and knowing that, you know, Tim had to leave. And so um, one thing I noticed about at this dinner, so they were in this room, like this big room, and but they were the only people in the room having this catered dinner. And so they had like this really big table and everybody was sitting at the table except for the sister Jan and I think maybe her husband and two kids. So I don't know if it was a contractual thing where they couldn't be on camera that much, but Poor Miss Jan, you know, she was sitting off to the side and then she had to kind of like yell over to them like when she wanted to join in the conversation, you know, she had to yell her comments over. So that was a really odd and um, awkward moment. 
after leaving the park, I think it was the second day or I don't know the editing, you know, be so screwed up. So you don't know what day, you know, what day it is, whether it's when they first got there or the day they was leaving. But, you know, it was one of the evenings that the ladies, you know, they all left the park early and they went back to the hotel and showered and put on their little sexy outfits and met down by the pool to have drinks. And so, you know, they were talking and Janae was thanking them, you know, for always including her in the family, even though her and Tim aren't together. And so, you know, I was thinking Miss Robbie and her sisters, you know, they are some very beautiful women. And so I was wondering if Jan and Linda, like how much younger they are than Miss Robbie, because I'm thinking she's the oldest, but like I say, you know, they're aging well and they look really good. And, and I hope Miss Linda was able to get up out of bed the next day because she was out there by that pool dropping it like it was hot, trying to catch them hundred dollar bills that Janae claimed she had. The ladies briefly talk shop and Janae says that they're up to like 27 restaurants. So I don't know if she was exaggerating or if they really have opened that many restaurants. But I say, you know, go ahead on Miss Robbie, y'all do your thing. So Tim makes it back to LA and you know, he's all in his feelings because Charles, you know, hasn't called to check in or see how he was doing. And so, you know, he claims he's going back to Orlando once he gets everything straight. But I'm like, yeah, right, Tim. Like, who would fly even if he had a direct flight, which I doubt very seriously. You're talking about like a four, maybe a four-hour flight from Orlando to California. But if he had a layover, you're talking about like a six to seven-hour flight because chances are you're going to be laid over about two hours somewhere else. And so he claims, you know, that he's coming back, but we know he's not going to come back. So Tim and Bruce, you know, they meet with the general contractor, Human, and he's telling them that, you know, the health department has denied the blueprints because the building was constructed prior to 1985. And I guess in 1985, all the codes changed for um, L.A., and so now, you know, all this work needs to be done to bring the place up to Coles. And so last week he was telling them to get both businesses open. It was going to be about $80,000. Well, now he's added about $30,000 onto that to change the plumbing and do some, I think he had to put a new hot water heater and run a new gas line. There's just all this stuff that he's going to have to do to that one location that I can't remember where it's located. So yeah, that's where Tim is with that. So of course this means that Tim can't get back to Orlando for the family vacation. And on the other hand, we, you know, the viewers who are watching this, you know, we're just going to pretend like he didn't return just to turn in the plans and give them a check, you know, but now we got all this other stuff going on with the plumbing and the electrical and the gas and everything, but okay. So back at the park in Orlando, you know, they're getting ready to go on a roller coaster ride. And I'm like, Miss Robbie, ain't no way. <laughs> you know, I'm not doing it. I don't do roller coasters. And so, you know, after the um, the middle people, you know, Charles's age, after they go on the roller coaster, then Charles um, takes TJ on one of the little kitty roller coasters. And he's saying how he's happy to be the one, you know, who's actually taking um, little TJ on his first roller coaster ride. So um, after they got off the roller coaster ride, then they went to the, um, I think it was called the Minion Mayhem. Minion Mayhem? Yeah, you know, after the little movie about the Minions. And so that seemed to be a lot of fun, you know, although they weren't going anywhere. They were just sitting in these car, you know, these little seats in like a car type thing. And it was rocking and rolling and there was something going on on the screen. But Timmy seemed to like it and it looked like it was a lot of fun. And so, you know, as they were uh, exiting out of the ride, there was like a little room and they had like a minion character in there. You know, he was dancing and they were playing music, you know, so they got a chance to, you know, dance with him. And so it just looked like it was a lot of fun. And I was just so happy, you know, that they were able to just relax and release and, you know, have a good time themselves. Charles calls to let Tim know, you know, that they're having a really good time and, you know, they were sorry that he couldn't come back. And can someone please let me know what was all that crap Tim had piled up in that SUV? Now, he's driving around this expensive Cadillac SUV but it's just like from the, the seat behind the driver's seat all the way into the bike part. It was just junk. He couldn't even see out the back window. It was so much stuff, you know, so he's riding around like he's actually living in that truck. So, you know, let me find out. And so Monique and Charles, you know, they still away to a bar, you know, to have a drink and catch up. And so Charles, you know, I 
they said he's 27 years old and you know he was telling Monique that Tim still um, pays his rent so this was like another one of those conversations where Charles feels like his life isn't going anywhere you know he's kind of questioning the decisions that he's making and he was telling you know Monique that he really loves it in California but he works so much that he doesn't get a chance to explore you know everything that the city has to offer and one of the things that he wanted to do I think a couple of seasons ago he wanted to get into acting so he was telling Monique that you know he hasn't even had a chance to find out about acting classes or what he would need to do to you know try out for a part and so he asked Monique you know would she be interested in moving to California and Monique was like nope I'll come for vacation but I'm not moving there and she said that one place that she would um, consider moving to is Texas but then she got sad because, you know, um, Andre lived in Texas. And so, you know, they get to talking about him and, you know, the tears start falling, you know. But then Charles reaches into his book bag and he pulls out these um, name tags. And it comes to find out that they were actually Andre's high school tags. And so, you know, they start reminiscing. So it wasn't really a sad moment. You know, again, another bittersweet memory where they wish Andre was still there but then they're thinking about the good times and the fun that they used to have with him. So back at the Inglewood store, you know, which was the one that was supposed to be open second, but now it looks like it's going to be open first. And so Tim thinks that what they have left to do, you know, won't take that long, even though he was saying putting in equipment, ordering food, hiring staff, ordering, you know, cooking the food and all this other stuff that he was saying, but he seems to think that they could wrap it up in a couple of weeks. And then while he's talking to Bruce and um, one of the guys that they've already hired for that location, who I think may have been to prison also, you know, he reiterates how, you know, he's opening all these businesses because he wants to give people an opportunity, a second chance, you know, and hire them when other people won't hire them. So Hopefully that'll work out for him and for the people and give them the opportunity to start anew. So back in Orlando, you know, the family's packing up and preparing to head back home, you know, and Miss Robbie, she loves TJ so much and she says that she is going to spoil him riding and she doesn't care what anybody said. And I think after all the loss that she's experienced, there's nothing wrong with spoiling your grandbaby. And so, um, you know, Miss Robbie, she goes on to say that she still doesn't know why Tim, you know, left and never came back. And but she knows that, you know, he's up to something with opening these businesses and that he's gotten himself in over his head. You know, but even though she missed him and hate that he missed the trip, she thinks that the vacation was much needed and even uh, more appreciated by everyone. So that's it. And um, what do you guys think about, you know, Tim ditching his family to deal with business? And could things have waited um, for him to return had this been the real world that we were dealing with? So leave your comments below and let's get the conversation started. And go ahead and rate, share, and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, love and blessings. Bye-bye.